quickly go to and I think we are live. Yeah, maybe just mute your mobile. And, um, yeah, okay. I am because I made yeah, that. We are, well. live, we are live now. Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Good, guys. It's Ashley and um, and Aries here. Today, we are going to talk about 8300 Pro. So last week, um, Ashley did some fantastic sharing about uh, how to use 8300 Pro, you know, indoor. Hello, Nayak. How are you? Um, so I thought this week I'll talk about the outdoor shoot, which I did recently with 8300 Pro. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Julio. Or Julio. Um, because it's such a versatile light, right? You you can you realize that when you use your indoor, it's so convenient to, to use the softbox or adapt to the bow mounts and uh, um, the sort of recycling time is pretty fast. That's still the strobe. And when you go outdoor, which I'm going to show you shortly, um, it's very light and such a small, um, such a small uh, light to carry around um, for its power. And uh, because it is designed, it has the same tube as 8400 in a sense. So, which is quite easy to use it for soft light, which is softbox and stuff like those, which actually has already showed us last week. So, Hello guys, uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'm just going to quickly share with you a, a video, which is longer version than YouTube to give you guys a bit more insight. Uh, meanwhile, any question is welcome. So like, since we're here and we'll talk, um, ask any question if you want to, yeah? Here we go. Yeah, they work like a charm. How good. Put them in that small bag, so easy to get around. Yeah. Do, do you have audio? Yeah, I don't have any audio. Is there supposed to be audio? Uh, so do, 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 do you hear the music or no? No, I can't hear the music. Can anyone else? Oh. No, do you hear music? Because I don't hear music. I hear music on my end, um, not to, yeah, but I guess. Yeah, so we're getting no music from the comments at the moment. So, so you hang... don't have any music on your, on your end, right? No, no. Okay. Hang tight, people. We will get this going for you in a second. Yeah. So, um, okay, no music, sorry. So, yeah, the, um, I put some, you know, the music doesn't doesn't really do much, to be honest. Um, maybe I will, you know what, guys, hang on a sec. Let me just change your software, right? Maybe um, we can get Aries to sing for us in the background. I heard he's got a good voice. He's very good at karaoke. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> sing, oh my gosh! Sing a song in the background. <laughs> Uh, um, Someone just said, "Just beatbox to it." Just beatbox. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Some the only, the only beatbox I know is "biu biu biu," like with oh. my thumb, and that's it. Pew, pew, pew. So yeah. That's so uh, not 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 the best idea. Um, but oh, everyone's asking share. Aries. Everyone's asking for you to sing Aries. <laughs> oh. Yeah, maybe, maybe after a few whiskey, after a few yeah. whiskey, when um next time, I in a sense, uh, let me just try. If you guys give me a few seconds, let me just quickly find out uh, where the video is. Live shoots. Can I ask you a few questions while you're looking? Because someone yeah, said, sure. well, "What a cute model! I would like to know her name." That's Akira Isola. I um. I think I, I actually um, tagged her in my Facebook page. So if you guys go through my Facebook page, uh, you should be able to find her. Someone else just... said, which size umbrella is that? Is that the 180? That's a 180. That's 180. 180. Yep. 
perfect. Let me just um, try to reshare, see if that works. Just give me a sec. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments. I'm going through the comments. Why? Yep. Ares is getting this working. We all know that technology never works the way we want it to work when we want yeah, it to work. Exactly. <laughs> Who likes my big Me. giant cup? <laughs> Let me just try to reshare um, through the the quick time. See if that works this time. Can you hear any audio? No audio. Still no audio. Yeah. Hmm. Can you hear the audio? I can hear the audio from my end. Mm -hmm. Um. Hi everyone. Yeah, I guess we just have to, um, you know what? Let's just settle, settle without the audio. So basically, uh, what I did in this photo shoot is that um, you see the umbrella, right? Um, huge. There are a few things I want to share. Number one, you see how small the light is? It actually de de um, delivers some powerful lights. So the experience I had, if you guys are shooting this, comparing with 8200 Pro, is uh, this light actually recycles faster. So especially when you use softbox, it actually helps. Um, it it actually helps. And any questions, guys? Yeah. Can can you um, ask so Aries to can you ask Aries to teach how to get that awesome pastel look? Okay, um, with pastel look, you need basically the lights you use, your flash you use needs to be softer. In a sense, um, in this case, shooting through an umbrella, like a reflective umbrella, will be softer than um, through the softbox, which I'm going to use in the next photo shoot. So if you want a soft and pastel look, your lights need to be soft. Um, so a reflective umbrella would help also a large light source the larger the better like mm -hmm. <laughs> um that's why i'm <laughs> using this huge softbox right and also it depends on the distance between um the lights and your subjects that's why you see you guys see that i place the light as close as to my model as possible right wow aries look at that that's amazing so, yeah. Someone said, um, um, Aries, I'm impressed that you do these shoots without an assistant. Um, with, I, I use, like, I do use uh, assistant from time to time, but for this one, because the light itself is sort of light on the light end, um, you can get away with a nice light stand, um, in a sense, without, wait, let me just get the, let me, where is um, so basically you can get away with it with um, well wow. so you can get away with it without adding um, adding heavy sort of sandbag and stuff like those so that's the advantage about 8300 pro right because it's so light you can get away with one man team in a sense so um, that's why I, I, I don't, you know, with the 8300 Pro, you don't, you don't need an assistant or you can, one assistant can manage it all for you. So really, yeah. um, it's, it's actually such an easy light to use. Amazing. Okay. And that light stand that you had too was really cool how you can make it go from like the top and then have it high up and down. It was really good. Yeah. So is that? Uh, let me ask. A few, uh, let me answer a few questions okay. here. Yeah, Ash, can you highlight the um, the comments on your end? Um, so if I you move your if you move your mouse over the comments, there yeah. is there something called a show? No. Okay, it's probably me. So basically, here's a question: Say, is I the am. Godox is that the Godox umbrella? Uh, it is. It's the 1.8 meter umbrella, or I think it's 75 inch. I'm not very good with inches, so 
it's 1.8 meter or 75 inches umbrella, right? I see you use that new XT trigger. Can you recommend it over the old one? I don't have a X1T, uh, but I can tell you the difference between this one and um, and um, the. Uh, I can tell you the difference between this one and uh, the X Pro. So with X2T, um, the power goes all the way down to one two five six, one out of two five six. So if you need to fine fine toning your power output, that's an advantage. And you can also uh, in the F function just change it to be uh, rather than 0.3 stop change, uh, change that to be 0.1 stop change to do the micro adjustment if that's something you want. Uh, another thing is X2T actually works with um, mobiles. So if you have a mobile, like a certain Android mobile and iPhone, that actually works with your mobile phones. So you can use your mobile phone with a flash if that's something you want. So that's the main difference for me when I use my X2T. I own my X Pro one, X Pro as well. So it's it's pretty good too. It's pretty good too. Wow. In this case, you ND filter to down the highlights. So um, in this, yeah. Well, I. Uh, I can't remember which one I used. I do have a, a, a three-stop ND filter, only because I'm in I'm in the one out of four thousand, or you know, thirty-two hundred seconds already after the ND filter. So uh, I I just want to use my f one point four eighty five G grandma G G master to soft her skin. So that's the only case. Otherwise, um, in Let's say in eighty percent of ninety percent of the cases, I wouldn't use ND filter. I just get away with high uh, high speed sync. That's all. Hope that answers your question, Julio. Ro Rosa Rian, nice try. Um, has asked you. I have a Godox two hundred Pro, and uh, they want to buy the three hundred Pro. What is the difference between eighty two hundred Pro, except for light power? Okay, so basically. Um, Okay, why don't do you want to answer the question? Actually, would you use eighty two hundred Pro earning for the indoor in, for the studio shot? I I've only used the eighty two hundred Pro as a fill light, so I have not used it as the primary light, primarily light. Is that the right word? Um, but I'm still experimenting. I do love my eighty two hundred Pro, but I mean the eighty three hundred Pro is better. <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be honest, uh, it depends on the photo shoots you do, right? I If you are the wedding photographer and a wedding photographer only, the wedding is 100% of your business and mm. you never use, you you put it this way, you never use softbox, you, want, you never want to use any softboxes, then you're probably better off with 8200 Pro mm -hmm. because there's AKR1, right? It, uh, it's small, great, small color gel and small um, like diffuser. It's it's so That's easy, great. so light to carry around if you are wrong gun kind of uh, photographer. So that kind of light is the light for you. Um, but if you like Ash, if you do st studio shots, AD300 Pro is definitely better in mm -hmm. terms of recycling time, right? Yeah. So you can you can burst shoot. Um, to capture the moments, especially with kids or you know those, and it works better with uh, soft boxes. So if you do portrait like I do, like like in this image, then eighty three hundred Pro is better. And even with umbrellas, right? Um, if you look at the tube size of eighty two hundred Pro and eighty three hundred Pro, you you notice eighty three hundred Pro tube size it's kind of similar to um, 8400 or 8600, so it's 180 degree kind of diffusion, so it works better with umbrella. Just my personal experience, though, it's personal, it's personal experience because I use round heads on my uh, 8200 Pro all the time. I just find yeah. it's it's better to I only I use it for weddings and pre weddings, like when it's too windy, I'll use it. Otherwise, if I want soft boxes, I'll always use 8300 Pro or 600 Pro. Hope that answers your question. 
Um, we've got Ru Rui Silvia. Um, sorry, I'm yep. really bad with the pronounce of these names. Normally, how many final images do you get for these shots, Aries? Depends. Depends, you know, if I had uh, good coffee <laughs> and uh, very unhealthy lunch like pasta, so white sauce, <laughs> white cream sauce pasta. Uh, it, it's it's hard to say. It's I'm spontaneous, right? Um, to give idea, I usually shoot about with this kind of images. I shoot about five hundred. I would say I will have twenty to thirty look, but I select certain. I select my strongest image uh, to be showed to you guys. I think about ten to twelve images there. So that's 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 the idea. That's the idea. And I've seen you do. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you shoot Aries. You're such a perfectionist too. You will make sure you get that right shot, won't you? Yeah, it's um, it's like when you when you shoot right in in certain shots, you know you are getting it. You just so, need to um, just yeah. slow down. Yeah, slow That's down to to make sure it works. That's like awesome. it's it's yeah. But other in other time, you just you know says, oh good good, let's move on to the next location. No, you're, you're really good yeah. like that. You are, you really yeah. take your time to get the best shot, and it's like. Yeah. I'm sure he's got it, and you're and you're like, no, nope, just one more time, one more time, and then you finally get that shot, and it's just amazing, but it's awesome. Um, Nicole Thanks. Marie asked you which light stand are you using there, Aries? Um, I to be honest, I don't remember. I <laughs> I have to leave this question to Kale, guys. Uh, I think I just grab a random light stand from Kale, which is my Australian uh, Godox distributor. They just Give this to me, so take it and use it. I'll just use it. Um, Can I give there is a new there is a new light stand coming out. I think it's called 420B, Godox 420B. It's very, very strong and rigid, rigid. So um you, you might just want to consider this. Um before we jump to the next question, let me just quickly explain the images to you guys, right? From left to right, the first one is natural light. Um, it then the second one would be the Lightroom color corrected. The third one will be the finished shots uh, in Photoshop, and last one will be the close-up crop. Right, right. I'm going to um, I'm going to zoom in a bit, just show you guys. Um, you notice that from the natural light one, it's not bad, right? It's not light and airy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the good is like it's light, light and airy. Um, you don't have to use any lights. But the, the thing is, it's kind of lack of contrast. It's yeah. especially when you're doing the sort of editorial or fashion kind of look. It's a bit flat. Especially and also the highlights in the background. Even I tried, tried so, I worked so hard to tone it down. It's still kind of uh, destructive. Um, the Lightroom color, color corrected one. You guys see, it's pretty much there already. It's just lack of contrast. So I always do my level and curve um, in my Photoshop because I find Lightroom sometimes I'm just struggling with the curve there. That's that stunning thing. I, and I did some light minor skin retouch because I use Sony 1.4. So it's kind of blur, like the eyes. It, can, let me just see if I can zoom Beautiful. in a bit. So you can see the eyes is crispy sharp. But uh, everything, the skin and everything, it's kind of blurred already. It's mm -hmm. kind of soft, out of focus sort of blur. So you just have some minor skin retouch and that's it. Yeah. Gorgeous. Nice and that's easy. Yeah. Beautiful image. I, prefer, yeah. I much prefer the flash one. It's just so much more punchy and the colors are so much better. Love it. Yeah. So like this one as well, if you, if I, I, I just I didn't even have a you know before the flash shot so it's just <laughs> it's 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 it gives you choices right it gives it gives you choices of to be more creative to to create what what comes up in your mind rather than you know just capture what's in front of you I exactly think. yeah uh, that's that's um, that's the advantage of the flash right let's have a look at the questions oh yeah um, do you want to start from Jake. What post processing did you use in Lightroom for this photo shoot? It looks really nice. Did you play around with the shadows to reduce clarity? 
Um, I basically I didn't touch the clarity. I never sharpened anything in um, in my Lightroom. I only because you know you sharpen for web, you sharpen for prints, you sharpen for different purposes. So basically, um, no, not not clarity. But I boost my shadows. Uh, like just play around with them. I boost my shadow quite intensively. Um, that's um, uh, that's my Lightroom process. But you guys see my original photo, so uh, you know um, you know that it's the light makes the difference, right? Because if you yeah. have a good piece of tuna or salmon, you can cook it to be a nice sashimi, or you can cook <laughs> it to be a nice pasta, right? True. But when you have a bad bad fish, stinky fish. <laughs> you're probably just gonna end up in the hospital. You know where I'm going. Right? <laughs> you probably just end up in the hospital, like uh, what Basically, I did. Like yeah. saying you can't polish a turd. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, you can't polish a turd. This is beautiful, Aries. I love it. I yeah. mean, the detail. So basically, yeah. So I think if you have good image, everybody just if you randomly apply, you know, apply some Lightroom preset, they all going to work, or most of them it's going to to be working. So yeah. Um, we've got is Godox 300 battery enabled? Can you help me to answer that question? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's saying like it's battery enabled. Like there's a ba there's a battery inside. Is that the question? Like um, what are they trying to ask the Aries? Um, I think let me quickly put uh, a slide. See if I if that answer your question. There we go. Yeah. So it's all portable. It's it's yeah. a portable light, and you basically get the battery. It's the same battery as the eighty two hundred Pro. So if you have an eighty two hundred Pro, um, and you're just taking out the eighty three hundred Pro, you can bring your eighty two hundred Pro as a spare backup battery, which I do quite often now. I have um, two eighty two two eighty two hundred Pro. So now I have three batteries ready for a shoot. But um, the battery um, lasts for quite a long time as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they um yeah, they're interchangeable. So hope that yeah. answers your question. Um here's can you share setting on AD three hundred pro pro? Okay. Sure. Um I can't remember exactly, but for this one, uh it's about a quarter a quarter power, something okay. like that. For this one, it's it's almost full power, so I, I think it will be more than half. It's either half plus 0.3 or half plus 0.7. Beautiful. Hope that answered the question. Yep. Um, Aries, about the new XT with the old not pro Godox flash with the 10 stop work with them. Did you get that question? I'm struggling. <laughs> Are you? Do okay. You? So, Aries. I want to know about the new XT with the old, not pro Godox flash, the 10 stop work with them. I'm sorry, my that question, I cannot, <laughs> I'm not able to answer. I, I don't have the non pro. Godox Pro. I think the only non pro light which I had was Godox 8200 and 860. It works with 860. But I sold my 8200 after I get an 8200 Pro. So <laughs> I'm sorry, my I can't answer that question. I, I don't have any non-pro lights around me. But if I do, I'll let you know. Yeah. Perfect. Maybe let's. Um, <clears throat> I'm in a decision between 28300 and 18400 or 18600 for private outdoor shootings and small home studio. I don't know which one to choose. Not sure if 300 watts are enough for outdoor. What do you suggest, Aries? Well, um, I think I think it's um, it really depends on the sort of a look you are going for. Are you the one light guy or you are the multiple light guy, right? If you are the multiple light guy, then go for 80 two times 8300 pro that's a no-brainer right so um but you're only going for one light and then do you have assistant 
if you do, then go for 8600. It gives you more power, so it's faster recycling time. And it's, um, yeah, why not? The thing is, I would advise you to go to the retail shop and try, especially if you're the one man team like me. Uh, what I enjoy about 8300 Pro, it's so light to carry around. Um, and bring your camera back with you. See which one of those fits in your bag. Uh, those are all very important. But look, if you have assistant and uh, to able to carry the lights for you all the time, then then you can either go for 28300 Pro or, or go for 8600 Pro. Doesn't matter. Or 8400 Pro, whichever you like. It really depends on, right? Depends on your situation and like what yeah. you shoot and how you shoot, and it's all sort of depends on yeah. how. you like if you shoot in London, if you shoot in London and it's cloudy most of the time, mm. you probably get away with one eighty three hundred Pro, right? But if mm. you're shooting on a Miami beach all the time, then you probably want eighty six hundred Pro. Not so, not not per se eighty three. You can't get away with eighty three hundred Pro, but. It's probably offers more, uh, you know, faster recycling time and, and bigger battery, right? So yeah, it depends. What we got next? Yep. Um, Aries, does using high speed sync kill the power potential of strobe? Yes. The strobe, yeah. Yeah. So with high high speed sync, you always lose a bit of power. Uh, unfortunately, there is no strict formula. Um, you just have to swing with it, right? Uh, for this one, I think I use one out of 4,000 seconds or one out of 3,200 seconds. That's the sort of high-speed sync we are looking at, basically. It's a pretty bright day, so you do lose... Uh, you do lose a bit of power. There are two things. Uh, two things you can do. Uh, number one is buy bigger light, right? Um, or get an ND filter. Either way would work. Thanks for that. Yep. All right. Where are we? We're on. Suhas Vadad and photography. Do you want to light up that one? Which one is better for How, software? Can you pronounce his last name again? I am really hard. bad. I, and I really have like the worst surname ever. And so no one can ever pronounce my surname. So <laughs> um, Suhas Vemalata. Vem no, <laughs> Which one yeah, is better I, for I'm like I, I've been knowing you for how many years? I, I'm still still struggling with your last name. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the question is, which one is better for softer light amongst below umbrellas? One black cover with a silver reflective, and with a diffuser, or two white reflective with diffuser, or three shoot through umbrella with a white on black. Okay. Uh, before I jump into that question, let me just quickly show you, give you guys a general idea why I would prefer 8300 Pro. Like now, if if I'm a one man team, right? If I have mm -hmm. like 20 assistants, <laughs> then that's another story. If I'm a one man team, or um, my assistant is a girl, or you know, sometimes when I do wedding or pre wedding shoots, I only have a makeup artist today. She um, she can watch the lights to make sure the lights doesn't fall for me, and then that's pretty much it. I still have to carry lights around with me. So that's a Peak Design 20L. I think it's 20L. It's the smallest size of Peak Design. So I can fit two mirrorless, like in this sense, Sony a7 III with, um, you know, with any lens you want. And I can fit two 8300 Pro in my bag, which is quite cool, because with 8200 Pro, it's lighter than 8300 Pro, but the size is a bit, it's a bit awkward. It's a bit long, right? It's taller than 8300 Pro. It's it's kind of hard to fit in my uh, in my camera bag. That's I think this will help to answer the question the previous uh, gentleman or lady asked about you know how to choose between 8300 Pro, 8400 Pro, and 8600 Pro. I think number one is consider do you. Uh, what sort of power do you need, right? Is that capable 
to 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 shoot to lead what you want. And number two is would that fit in your camera bag? I, I think that's pretty important as well, right? Do you, number three is do you have assistant? If you don't have like, assistant, I would say eighty three hundred Pro is probably lighter. Be remind be reminded. It's usually on the light stand, right? If it's lighter, then it's with the same light and reliable light stand. It's harder to fall mm. with wind, right? If I'm going to because we are living on the seaside. We, I'm going to La Perouse or any beach side to shoot all the time. It's pretty windy, um, like between 20k and 34k of wind. It's something we're going to have daily. So 8300 Pro. A comfortable stand on a light stand without any sandbag, you should be fine to get away with it, right? If you put on softbox, yes. On a windy day, you probably just get a sandbag. You can still get away with it. But with 8600 Pro, I'm not saying it's not stable. With a good light stand, yes. Uh, but with light light stand, like the you know the sort of foldable one, then you you might be struggling. That's all. That's something you have to uh, consider, right? The lights. You know, safety and would you be willing to carry around that lights? That too. Let me answer the question of Suhas. Um, between one to three, reflective, it's always the softer light. That's why you see when I shoot, um, um, you see when I shoot, um, I use, if you look at here, let me just quickly, yep. You see it's a white umbrella, right? Because I'm going for the pastel, soft look. So a white umbrella, uh, white is better than silver because silver tends to be more contrast, right? So white two is better than one. Than one. White reflective is better than the silver reflective. Uh, shoot through, comparing with white, I would say white. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I would say reflective is softer than shoot through. So in a sense, the umbrella with diffuser is better than the, um, it's softer than the softbox with diffuser. Hope that makes sense. Yep. Definitely makes sense. <clears throat> yep. Next question. Or, yep. Can we change the color temperature in the AD300 Pro? Can you help? Ash? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can actually. Do you have another example of the AD300 Pro again? Yeah, like how about this? There's a little switch. There's a little um, button there that we can show you where it does that. Um, you mean the color temperature? Yeah. I think for, uh, for flash, it does. Oh, it doesn't, right? The flash is always stay at uh, around 5700K. For the, um, wait, let me see if I have one of those. Yep. Then for the modeling lamp, yes, you can change the color temperature. So this is at um, 6,000K mm -hmm. and um, this is at 3,000K, the light. That way you can cast Given. the environment to be on the blue side, right? Yeah. I like the blue side. It looks cool. Yeah. So in answer to that question, you can change the color temperature, can't you? You can with the modeling lamp. Mm -hmm. With the flash, no. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, where are we? With the XT, have... Yeah. Oh, we, mm -hmm. This is um, Julio again. So he's he's asking the same question, isn't he? With the XT2, does it, it have 10 stops? Yeah. It has 10 stops. Uh, it's not 10 stop. It's like 0.1 stop. It's like, let me to be specific. Let's say 1 out of 32 power, right? Then you can have plus 0.1, plus 0.2, plus 0.3. Instead of plus 0.3, plus 0.7, and then all of a sudden you got a one of 16, right? Mm -hmm. So it has it allows you to do the micro adjustment. But I'm not this question is not crystal clear, so I'm not sure my answer is the dedicated answer to that question, though. Yep. 
DB Photography, hello. Do you prefer prime lenses or do you also use zoom lenses sometimes? Um, so um, I have all of them. I use all of them. It just depends on, on the photo shoots and um, yeah, what I want. What are, you, what are you using in this photo that we have up right now? This is 85 GM. So prime, it's beautiful. But, the reason I use it is only because um, I find it's just because I have two camera bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, when I shoot this kind of photo shoots, I, I, I prefer to use two zoom, uh, two prime lens with me. Uh, but for studio shots, and sometimes you see in my other shots, I use 70 to 200. So depends. What right? are the two lenses matter. that you have on you when you shoot? 85 and what's the other one? 85 and 24. 24. Perfect. That's yeah. That's good. Yeah, because both lens, to be honest, are on the lighter side, right? Yeah. yeah. And you've got, you know, a wide and then a close angle, so it's perfect. Yeah. Michael Quack, I got the surname. <laughs> Use C CTB, CTO color filters. I don't think oh, that's a question, is it? I think there maybe is that answering to I answer the, the change the color, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yes. Jake's channel. Oh, I love this question. Thanks, Jake. Deep life question for both of you. What aspect of photography makes you happy? Go ahead, Aries. Tell us why what makes you go you first. Happy. You go first. Oh, you need to, you need some water, don't you? Um, I love photography, like honestly. It's just everything, it, it's, it's such a hard thing to explain because like I say that photography is like in my soul, like it's just who I am, um, it's a piece of me. So what aspect makes me happy about photography? I would say lighting is a big thing in photography that makes me happy, like playing with different light sources from natural light to flashes to your like um, constant lights and whatever light that you have available makes it makes me happy to be able to play around with different light sources and then get a shot and be like oh my god that's so that's so different like to what i sh like shot last week so i love light light is um definitely one part of photography that makes me happy what about you aries you're gonna say uh, the same thing no I'm, I'm going to say something really shallow <laughs> <laughs> so funny. um guys uh I look. I was a nerd when I was in the uni. I um I I had a I did a PhD. That's how ner how nerdy I was. Uh, I had a scholarship, but I didn't have girlfriend. So I thought <laughs> oh, no, photography, would, photography would be easy to to um to you know to instead of talk to the girl think you know I don't have six packs by then. Um, <laughs> I don't have the. I, I, you know, I hate going to the gym. I love pasta. So you can, you can imagine the kind of guy I, I was. So I'm struggling to find a, even find a topic to talk to the girls. I thought, you know, if I do photography, I don't have to talk to them. I just show them the photo and, you know, I can invite them. Maybe going, you know, to my house and showing how, do, how do I do editing? And uh, end of the day, I didn't find any girlfriends through photography. And one of my mates actually asked me to second shooting for him in his wedding. That's how I started with my career. Well, what sort of what you know? Um, what are aspects of photography makes me happy? I guess. Um, yeah. I was being I, I was being all sentimental with mine, and then it comes in. Yeah. What? What? Why do I do photography? I only do photography because I get to work with hot models. <laughs> is that, is no, that why? I was, I was, no, I was trying to find a lifetime soul soulmate or partner. That's um, it didn't work to be honest. Um, oh. but um, I I found something I love and uh, you're so and, good at it. Though. And be creative and to um to express how I feel about this world, especially when I'm doing my editorial parts, right, with stories. That's um, I I guess it's sort of uh, it's very similar with. When you do photography, trying to be creative, it's almost like you're seeing a psychologist, right? Mm. A fantastic psychologist. It's the way you see yourself. It's the way you 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 cure, um, you know those 
something hurt you when you were young or you were child when you were childhood or it's the way you forgive the people or it's it's the way you saying i love you for the people you didn't have a chance to so all all those all those and you know what aries you are yep. like the best at finding a story out of any photograph even if their photographer hasn't really taken the photograph to convey a story whenever i see you judging at wppi or aipp you always find a story within a photograph whether it's like not obvious or not and then when you start to talk about the story when you're judging i'm just like oh my god where does airy find that story it's so true he he's found a story in a photograph that isn't so obvious but that's what i love about your judging when i see you at wppi you're, you're able to find a story from an image just so easily and quickly as well <laughs> yeah I guess you always have to because I'm I I've been at game for so many years. Number one to start with, you always have the room in your students' favor, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the story is the soul of the image, right? It's mm, exactly. you you have you have all the beautiful lightings and beautiful composition and the beautiful gesture. You in, inviting all the audience to look into the image. Mm. There is a there should there should be a message you want to deliver as an artist as a photographer. Yeah. Right, and, and and I guess that's that's the sort of story. Yeah, it's it's something that universal can be shared yeah. among all the all the audiences. Yep, definitely, I agree. Yeah. Um, also, nowadays with li literally everyone being a photographer and being able to buy fancy equipment, how do you manage to stand out and make your work unique, Aries? I just use um. To be honest, I just use light. I don't use light like for a typical example would be I I don't use light all the time in my wedding, but uh, you always have this wow images, right? You for me I always use my lights sometimes multiple lights to set up. People call me like call me crazy, but you know that works for me to separate myself from from the rest. Yeah. How about you? Same for me. Um, every photographer on Instagram these days, you know, natural light photographers, natural light candid photographers. And, you know, if you really want to stand out, you need to have work that stands out. And for me, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm talking on Godox channel right now and we're talking about the lights, but I, 100% when I started um, bringing in off-camera flash work into my wedding work and started sharing my night photographs with these under the stars and backlit and romance and beauty so many people would come into my studio and say i want to make sure that i hire you to the end of the night so that i can um get that night shot you know and even if it's just one shot that stands out all you have to do is take one shot that resonates with your client that they see and go i want a shot like that um and that's how you'll stand out so for me it's definitely um lighting and you know um you know creating those wow beautiful shots with different lighting something that's different but i'm with aries on that one yeah so let's um okay let's talk this for the umbrella when do you use white and when do you use silver um let me just quickly show you guys So this is, can you guys see it? Yeah, he's very cute. This, yeah, <laughs> he's, um, so this is white, okay? Mm -hmm. If you want something mimics the cloudy day natural light, you use white. If you want something more uh, fashion, I guess with more contrast on the fashion side, use silver. Hope that answers your question. All right. Did you, did you um yep. with the black side? What did you say? When when would you use the black side again? When you're doing like um when you want to create more shadow? Did you say? Uh, which one? Which question are you referring to? No, 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 no. Someone said when you use oh the silver. So sorry, I thought someone said black. My bad. Ignore me. I'm I. It's kids and I need more coffee. <laughs> no worries. So. 
um, this is a second location. Uh, you guys may may already seen this in the um, in the in the YouTube. Just showing you guys a bit more details um, about the phone booth. I'm also going to show you guys uh, the before and after. So hopefully that helps answer the questions. And meanwhile, let me have a look at Trevor's questions. How long is it safe to have the modeling lamp on full power, especially if it's using a constant light? Um, so basically, I I don't use it as mod. I have an 8400 Pro. OK. Trevor, I haven't used 8400 Pro for a while, so I can't be 100% sure. But for 8300 Pro, it's pretty safe. Um, it lasts as long as you want to. Um, I think I shoot more than an hour at a, at a night location. It was, it was good. I would imagine for 8400 Pro, you would do similar. That's um, ho hopefully that answered the question. So thanks. Thanks for sharing your tips and mastery. Is there any big tutorials for sale? Do you want to talk about your workshop? Oh, no, that's OK. My, actually, my workshop's been postponed because uh, we can't have workshops in Victoria at the moment. So um, all the planning and preparation, and we've had to postpone it, but that's OK. Mm. I love these shots, Aries. Look how cool they look. Yeah. So uh, I, I think I have any, um, any big tutorials for now. Um, but um, who knows? In the future, maybe, Ash, let's just do one. Yeah, in we'll In the do future, one. see how we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see how we go. Um, so between the left and the right, let me just quickly explain, guys. That's natural light, Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, close up, close up, right? So you see your... Um, your before and after, it does make a huge difference, right? You can almost, you see the background is overexposed. I'm not too sure on the video, you can see that clearly. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. are a lot of color, ca uh, color cast because um, in the phone booth, there's a terrible, terrible light there. So you can pretty much kill all the ambient, um, expose for the background. In this case will be the sky, right? You see the sky in the background is bluish. Right, you can expose for the background, and yeah, just give her short light. Um, you, I use eighty five with softbox with great, and that's the sort of details you're looking at. And be reminded, I'm actually shooting from a very, very dirty uh, public phone booth glasses. So yeah, that was. I didn't even, I didn't even know we had phone booths in, in Australia anymore. <laughs> we do in. Um, in some, you you don't see them very often nowadays. This but is like do. a like a cool one though with the yeah the red like yeah. London. It was it was nice color palette, so I, I thought Beautiful. you know why don't we just do it? Yep. Right. Let's see this. <clears throat> do you like using the eighty three hundred Pro or the eighty four hundred Pro more? Uh, for me, um, I use eighty three hundred Pro more. Uh, because with my with my peak design bag, I can carry two um, eighty three hundred Pro with me, but it only would allow me to carry one eighty four hundred Pro if I want to use two camera bodies. Which is let me just quickly show you the picture. The picture. There we go. You guys see the back. So. Um, it's a it's a very small mirrorless bag, right? With if I use lower pro sort of you know DSLR bags, I can probably get away with carry two um, eighty four hundred pro. But for this bag, you know it's perfect size to carry two eighty three hundred pro for me uh, with me. So I use eighty three hundred pro more nowadays. What camera do you use? I use Sony A seven. M3, both of them. One is with 24 GM, one is with 85 GM for this particular photo shot. Photo shoot, though. Yep. 
how do you find ideas and locations for your photos and how do you prepare for your shoots? Okay, uh, idea and location. Mm. Do you plan Aries or do you like just go with the flow? I, to be honest, I always, I always plan. I always plan um, from time to time. Um, if I could, I will do a pre-shoot. If I couldn't, I'll find some Instagram um, sort of ideas, like, you know, to, to have a general idea of the location. Um, then I can I will use some sort of, this is happy I developed when I was doing lots of landscapes back in those days. I'll use those, land, you know, photo, what's that called, photo peels, I think. Um, it's, a, it's an app that allows you to, to calculate. Oh yeah, it's called a photo peels. To cut, to see the light where the light falls, and um, to to almost see what's the best time for the um, for the photo shoot, that's the sort of apps I would use so I can prep uh, my photo shoots. But if I can, I always do a pre shoot just to make sure I you know um, I can speed up the process, especially when I'm using a model because they could be <laughs> quite expensive. It could be like right. five hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, and um, you, yeah. And you know what? I guess having flashes as well, like, really helps with not having to prepare for the shoot because, like, if you're um, preparing for a shoot in, like, say Melbourne or Sydney, it could be really, really sunny that day, and you know, all your preparation goes out the window because of bad lighting. So when you're using flash, you really don't have to really prepare too much because you can control your lighting. Yeah, exactly. So if you guys see, um, I think to, to, to supply the message, you guys see that, um, let me just quickly share with your image. Um, th this is a similar shots I've done in, um, in a no location, which is very close to the one I shoot with uh, Akira. If you see those, it's different. It's a very cloudy day, right? Yeah. It's a very cloudy day. Like uh, when I was shooting Akira, it was a very sunny day. Does mm. it make sense, guys? Yeah. Sorry, to So you. when you have flash, then it sort of helps you to to uh, to be adaptive to all light conditions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah, that's uh, that's basically. And like uh, if you put those photos together. Um, even though you had more of a sunny day and then you had a cloudy day, the tones and everything, the lighting still really matches each other in some way. So um, yeah. flashes really help with, with that kind of situation, I guess. Yeah, it helps you be consistent in a sense, right? right? And, yeah. And has more control with that. your light. Yeah. This is you can't just go into a wedding praying it's going to be overcast day so you can go. I know. <laughs> Yeah, you can go. Uh, you can go natural on the, you know, everywhere. So yeah. Okay. Um, how long to fully charge a battery, and how many shots at full power can you expect from eighty three hundred Pro? How long does it take to charge a battery? I feel like it it charges really quickly. I think it's an hour, an hour and a half, or something like yeah. that. It's not exact. I think it's exactly in the same as eighty two hundred Pro, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just using the same battery, so um, I I don't think it takes long at all. Like I literally have um, done a few portraits lately, and you know, getting the, all the kids ready for whatever to go to the babysitters. I forgot that I hadn't charged my batteries for my flash, and it was like an hour to go, and I I got one charged up just in time, and. Yeah. And as soon as I, the client came, I had another one on there. So it doesn't take long at all. Um, but, yeah, how many shots at a full power can you expect from the 8300 Pro? Yeah. Um, Naomi, I couldn't answer that from my personal experience because um, I barely shoot with full power. You, you Like if you, if you use a light at full power all the time, it probably means you need to upgrade your light, right? If you use 8300 power, 300 Pro at full power all the time, that's probably means you need to buy 8400 Pro and 8600 Pro. Um, 
the general guide I do is I use most of the, my lights under half power, under half power for uh, most of my shoot during the day. So I can't answer the question from a personal experience, but I just did a quickly Google. <laughs> so it's, my Google keyword is Godox 8300 Pro battery full power. It says 320 times on a full charge, full power. So it's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Quite impressive. And from my personal experience, I shoot for a whole day with one battery. That's enough. So that's my personal experience. Yep. But 320 yep. times, that's the answer, official answer you're looking for. Here's the question. How about 8600B? How many hours will use? In full power. In how full many? power. So probably how many hours can you use the battery in full power using the 800, 8600, is it 8600 Pro or something? Yeah. I think it's 8600B is uh, it's the non-pro version, which I'm yeah. not too sure. I'm sorry, I don't have the light, so I can't answer the question. Hi, P. Uh, <laughs> can, you, can you tell me what your favorite Godox softbox is and why? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, let me just quickly answer, uh, clarify the question about... Um, um, the full charge. To fully charge a battery, uh, you need 2.5 hour, sorry, an empty battery to get that fully charged. So yeah, 2.5 hour. Sorry guys, because um, I, I never, I never went on until I drain the battery to, to, to recharge it. It's always something left there. I, I that, that's why, um, but for empty battery from 0% to 100%, it's 2.5 hour, it's 2.5 hour, okay? All right. We got lots of questions here. Yeah. You're a popular man. <laughs> uh, now, um, it's you You build up to it. So um, we didn't get to answer all the questions last, last week, remember? So <laughs> we just, yeah. What's your favorite, Ashley? Oh, well, I only have one at the moment. Um, and I will build up a collection, I hope. Um, but yeah, I'm using the, um, is it the, it's the smaller one. Is it the 90, uh, can you answer that? You you know, <laughs> it's the much smaller one than the, yeah, remember yeah. the one that we, because we did, we discussed that I wanted to get. 65? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So mm -hmm. I wanted to get a smaller one so that I can use it um, on a wedding day and that it was easy to pop up and down. So, but I, like I said in my last video, I definitely want to get a bigger one because um, I definitely need a bigger one. I think my favorite softbox will be the, to be honest, will be the, are we talking about all the lights or we talk about 8300 Pro? I talking about um, what um, your favorite Godox softbox is and why. Uh, I think with small lights, it's AKR1. Remember the uh, the small gel and small dome and small grid for the mm -hmm. 8200 Pro. Yes, that's yes. my, uh, when I use 8200 Pro, I think that's the most frequent. Uh, I'm not sure if you call it's that that's qualified as a softbox. That's my go to mm -hmm. because it's light and so easy to carry around. Yeah. But when you talk about larger softbox, like the proper softbox, I guess it's. 86.5 for outdoor and um, the umbrella for extremely soft pastel look. Yeah. I guess in a sense, it's like it. my zombie, it's not like marrying a wife and you stick stick with her for the rest of your life. You can my, try it all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like you, you can, you, you don't have to make a choice. Man. You can date them all. Yeah, that's right. You once you once you're over the other one, you toss it out and get another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you no, you just keep them in the same house. Yeah, I they, think. They, just, yeah, that's no. Don't toss it out. Definitely don't. Yeah. You just use whatever you need to use for the right time and the environment and stuff like that. But yeah, Aries is spot on about the the um the accessories, the AK AK accessories thing for the 
AD200 Pro. That is awesome, that little path. I love it. Yeah, I think to answer that question, to, um, let me just quickly show you guys. So this is a grid, right? You find grid is pretty useful because I don't want I don't want the lead, the light. I want the soft light to, to start with, which seals her and seals, you know, her look and her. But I don't want the lights to to sort of spill around on the ground, which is quite destructive. So I add a grid. So that's eighty five with grid. But sometimes, if you look at this image, um. I'm mimicking the harsh sunlight, which is spotlight, right? So I use the long reflector. So it depends. Depends on the case. You you need to use different tools. That's at least what, what I believe. Um, I know people use soft, softbox uh, from beginning from shoot one to shoot three hundred for the whole day, and they always put the softbox really close, like one one meter. Um, around, you know, from the model uh, for a very consistent look. I guess you can do that too, but life is about the experiments. So I always want to try different tools, different look. It's just me. So this is a harsh, right? Harsh, hard light look. And um, if you look at this, it, this is very soft pastel light. You know, especially this. If I don't tell, if I don't tell you, I don't show you. You could you could probably think it's a it's a natural light, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends. Depends on the look you want. I I would say that with more lights, with more modifiers, you have more creativity, or you have more choices to um to to create different looks. Hope that answered the question, Mike. Mm. All right. Um, let's see the next question. Caesar, is it? Oh no, Robert Joan Jacobs. Uh, Robert jo Jacobs. Yep. Shooting real estate, the eighty two hundred and the two hundred Pro is awesome. Partly because of the small diffuser AD S seventeen. Is there a smaller diffuser for the eighty three hundred Pro? Um. Not that I am aware of, but I'm sure, like, words on the street, don't ask me how. Um, I, I heard there's a small diffuser coming. So stay okay. tuned. I couldn't even find 80, 88, 17. Sorry, I'm struggling. Just You're Googling. I was like, what's Yeah, I'm doing? Googling. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Oh. Well, no, nobody knows everything. Ah, uh, okay. So it's very similar to the AKR1 dome. It's very similar to the AKR1 dome. Ah, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure there's something. Uh, there'll be something coming out. Um, yeah. Um, right, let's look at yeah. the next question. Caesar. Caesar. I like that name. Beautiful shot, Aries. How much power in the Godox do you use for the telephone shoot? That's, uh, if you're referring to this shot, that's uh, somewhere between one out of 16 to one out of eighth. Can we see the shot again? Yeah. Oh, I didn't share it, sorry. <gasps> which shot is which shot is he talking Yeah, this one. This is amazing, because like so This light. is somewhere between one of 16 or one of 32. A one of sixteen to one of eighth. This is considerably closer, so that's somewhere between one of thirty second, a uh, thirty two to one of sixteen. One of sixteen. Beautiful. That's the sort of power we're looking at. It's about three between somewhere between two thirty to three thirty in the afternoon, and our sunset is about five thirty by then. Just give you a general idea. Afternoon, so afternoon. I love the one that you showed before. That's my favorite. Yeah. All right, let's, um, maybe let's play the video. Mm -hmm. And um, So no music from your end, Ash? No, no music. Oh, I, I heard beautiful music. 
I know. I can imagine it would be. Oh God. But to give you guys some idea about um, this is nearly somewhere near sunset. You guys noticed I um I use the S2 type bracket. So basically the reason is that it could get quite windy on the coast. So S2 brackets actually tends to hold the light better when your light is on a big softbox, right? So even you don't use that with Bowen mount, it helps you to adapt to the Bowen mount modifiers. But if you even you use it by itself, it's actually quite good to hold the light. This is making me so excited to try outdoor um, work with that. Yeah. This is so inspirational. Whoa, <laughs> Eric's taking risks. For the clarification, I <laughs> did go down there myself and try and make sure it's safe before I sent, um, I asked the model if she wants to go there. Right. So let's answer the questions. Please give us the name of the, um, the light stand. Again, uh, I think it's 420B. I'm yeah. not hundred percent sure for twenty B. I think KL yeah. have written a comment saying if you scroll up to the comments, you will see a okay. link to the stand. So um, to Conrad, if you scroll up, there's a link from KL, so you can check it out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh yeah. All right. So okay. Thank you, KL, for answering that question for me. Um, let's go next. What's tonight's great online special? <laughs> I think someone's asking um, Rob from KL a question. All um, right, you know what? I, I I think I actually do have a special prom promo code here. Just give me a sec. Ooh, promo code. All right. Yeah, that's for um, that's for Australia only, though, guys. Um, so take a picture. Because I can't, um, you know, stay this page forever. I we do have uh, guests from uh, other countries, but take a picture and use this, use this promo code for your online ordering, or you know, just call KO up. That's cool. Cool guys. All right. All right. Let's go to the next question. I do have to go to work right now, but thank you for your answer. Ah. That's really nice. Cool. No worries. Yeah. Leave us a question. You know, if you have any question which is unanswered, come back next week. I'm sure um, we will find a chance to answer all your questions if there's any. So enjoy your work and stay safe. Jack, I think that's for you, Ashley. Ashley, as you are primarily do weddings, how has COVID-19 impacted your photography business? Just as everything's getting normal again, Victoria gets hit hard. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's impacted it pretty, pretty, um, pretty badly. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess, you know, you got to see the positives. I'm enjoying some time with my family. I'm enjoying time getting creative, learning how to, you know, play around with portraits and playing with the 8300 Pro, learning different skills so that when I do go back to shooting weddings, I'm going to have all this energy and I'm going to be refreshed and ready to go. So it has impacted me, um, but, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. It's impacted a lot of people, including Aries, even though um, Victoria is getting hard, hit hard bad now. It's not just Victoria. It's, it's Australia-wide. It's worldwide, really. Everyone's impacted. So we're all in it together and, um, yeah, that's the answer. Awesome. Um, keep on going. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you go to Rob. Did you miss? Oh, no, no, no. We're going down. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I think Rob is uh, answering the question, really. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. 
um, rude. Okay, so which size of modifier modifier will be better to couple with the eighty three hundred Pro for outdoor shooting? Ah, uh, you see my answer. I I I, I mainly use. I think to to answer the question, it really depends. Uh, are you living on coast side? Is it like in another sense, is it windy there? Or if it's not windy, right? If it's windy, then you probably want a smaller softbox, which is 8065. If it's not windy, then you can go for a bigger softbox, which is 85, right? So that's the modifier, main modifier you're looking at. Um, either, either softbox can be used as softbox, softbox or, or it can be used as a beauty dish, which we discussed in the previous episode. And if it's not windy at all, like in a park, or you have sandbag, you can use the 1.8 meter um, umbrella with a diffuser, which I used in the video. So yeah, it really depends. Or get them all and try then return the one you don't want. <laughs> get them all. That's really good advice. I'm, or I would just I would just borrow from one of my friends, to be honest. Yeah. Just borrow them. If I like them, I will keep them and say, sorry, I lost it. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Or um yeah. Just try them all. Try them all in the in the retail shop and see which one works for you. And then go from there. Go from there. How Go do you get? Two, two, oh yeah, sorry, I was just reading that. Go for yeah. it. How do you get a correct exposure with flash and balance the ambient light with strobe? Do you have a light meter? Hey Jim, I don't. Um, uh, I don't use a light meter. It's look. If I, I do have a light meter in my bag. If I can't get the look I want in about three shots or five shots, I will take out the light meter. I think in 95% of time, I don't need them. Um, it's just like, it's it's your personal taste, isn't it? If you, let me just quickly show you guys. Um, if you pay attention to this or this, you notice the light ratio is like totally different from this, right? One, you have a strong, you know, for this one, you have a stronger flash uh, with th about three stop under exposed ambient. And this, you have a minus 0.7 stop under exposed ambient with a very subtle flash. Right, this is within the same lens, within the same light modifiers. So I would say that um, there is no correct answer. If you look at the masters of Renaissance painting, uh, you see Cavaraggio, right? In a sense, he's the kind of contrast guy. He's he has his dark. He's right. he has lots of shadows and harsh lights, right? His contrast, in a sense, is very high. But if you look at Rembrandt, um, so Rembrandt's contrast is more on the natural side. Even mm -hmm. the light itself is on from the side, but it's you can you can almost see Rembrandt's light. It's almost like umbrella, huge umbrella diffused. And if you look at Da Vinci, that's a different look, right? If you look at Raphael's Raphael's painting, it's almost flat. So it really depends the look you are going for. I wouldn't say there is a correct answer. Just go for it. But if light meter works for you, go for it by all means. Hmm. Sorry, I start to work. Awesome. Let's look at this. Um, I have three V1 light for travel. Which strobe has the lowest output? Um, actually, um, do you, um, do you <laughs> get a question? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I don't have the AD200. I only have the AD200 Pro. So I, I would say that the answer to that is 
Aries to answer because he's had the 8200 Pro, hasn't he? Yeah, but I don't remember the time I used 8200 Pro. Which mm. strobe has the lowest output oh, yeah. between? They're they're both 12, 12, They're both two hundred watts. So I would say yeah. they have the same output. The same, isn't yeah. that? Well, to give yeah. you some general idea, Austin, uh, your V1 is somewhere like between seventy watts to eighty watts. Mm -hmm. Your two hundred Pro it's about two hundred watts. So it's about three times output of V1 for every eighty two hundred Pro. So it's very simple mathematics. Um, Which camera do I use? I use A7 M3 and actually use S1, right? I use yeah. S1. Yeah. yeah. All right. John. So, yeah. yeah. And let me just quickly, guys, uh, sure. before we jump on to the next question, let me just quickly Elas, show you guys the difference, right? Um, this is a fuel light with no grades. So basically, you see, we just fill up the details for her dress, right? And this, this is a softbox. This is from left to right, natural light, lack of contrast. You can see, I, uh, I, I think I lived in in, in post production, so two mm. stops up, and Lightroom, photoshopped, and. Uh, and that's it. Photoshop, you know, cropped in, and that's that's it. So you see, hot light works as well. This is by the lung reflector, lung reflector. And this is by the 80, 80, 85. Oh God, it's it's so hard to pronounce. 80, 85 softbox. And this as a fill light, and this is 80, 85 as well, but this time with great, right? Okay. Great guys. I, I like them all. Uh, to be honest, it just only depends on your preference. Which look are you going for, right? Which look are you going for? So, all right. Let Go me on. just quick. Yeah, let's just quickly come back and answer the questions. So maybe someone... Nice promo code for US. I'm really interested in adding 8300 Pro to my Arsenal Golos lighting gears. Hey, John. Um, for me, it's out of, a bit out of reach, but I'm sure Godox has seen this and um, they'll organize something. Yeah. Um, um, from there. Do you guys have a next live week. event next week? Yeah, we try to have a live, live event every, every single week, guys. So, um, it's usually on Wednesday and depends on the speaker's availability. Next week we will be Nikki. So hopefully we will um, we will use the same time. That's my sister, if you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> What's she going to talk about next week? Uh, should I ask? We should <laughs> probably ask her. No, but like she she's a videographer, isn't she? So she's obviously yeah. going to be talking about video lighting and how to... Um, Use yeah. it to your so advantage. I think she's going to talk about the new VL300, which is exciting. I was, um, I heard that's, um, that's something works really good, works really well. Especially guys, if you guys doing mixed video and, and photos, if you're doing a bit of videos on the video side, doing the receptions or doing the sort of food. I, I mean, in food photography, lots of people use video lights as well. So yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, and come back next week. Um, where can I see indoor use of Godox? We do that all the time. Um, probably next. Probably next week we'll talk a bit more about that. And last week that was indoor use, right? We did a studio shop. Yeah. Remember, Ash? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. if you Great check deal. out, yeah, yeah. YouTube. If you go to YouTube or Facebook, check out the, the, the live cast we did last week. That's that's indoor as well. Someone said you um, remembered power settings earlier. How do you recall those? Are they just standard settings or you find a mostly useful or comfortable with or are they stored in metadata? So basically, it's not stored in the metadata. Um, basically, um, 
because I, I did this short about a month ago. I still remember then. If you ask me half a year later, I, I, I would have no clue. But for, <laughs> for sunny weather, for sunny kind of weather, if it's full sunny day, I will probably start from somewhere around a quarter power. That's somewhere I would start with, with my 8300 Pro uh, with a softbox. Under shadow, I will go from one eighth power or one sixteenth power. If you think it's not powerful enough, then you lift it up a bit. Um, if you if you think it's too hot, then you tone it down a bit. The key here is make sure you have a pre-visualization. You know what you're going for, right? Mm -hmm. And make sure uh, you set up your ambient light, ambient exposure. You fix your camera setting first because you have pre-visualization and all you have left is the light power. Don't try to change exposure and change aperture and change light. That way it wouldn't work. Do one thing at a time in correct sequence. That's something I, uh, I think that's, uh, that's gonna be help you to simplify it, the process. That's valuable information there. Eh? <laughs> I'll leave that <laughs> question to you, Ashley. No deal. <laughs> um, you were a Canon before you were Sony, weren't you? Yeah. 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 And I was a Canon before I was Panasonic. So we're both shipped over, and I don't think we're planning to shoot sh jump mm. ships again. So sorry, we can't help you with that question. <laughs> I don't be too, too, like, I try to avoid. Um, talk down on any brand or uh, any model, but to me, uh, Sony works better for me. It's just it's sharper, it's sharper, and it's always in focus. Even at if I shoot at one point four all the time, so the image you see, I shoot like for this one. Let me just quickly show you. It's it's at. 24 GM, which is 24 meters prime lens at 1.4. It's crispy sharp. Um, I find, um, you, if you guys can see her eyes, it's crispy sharp. Um, I find I'm be struggling with um, uh, with uh, with Canon glasses, with EF glasses. I'm not sure if the RF uh, would fix the problem, but I'm pretty happy with Sony now. I don't I don't see myself change to the Canon anytime soon. So. You two guys are amazing. Can I ask for advice from each of you? Can I have a tip for use of Godox 300 for weddings and portraits? You go first. You go first. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, with portrait, let me let me answer the question for portrait and ask you. Uh, like, with portrait, uh, what sort of look? Uh, if you're going outdoor and um, then use 85. So it depends on her color, um, so her skin condition and the look you're going for. You can use either use 85 as softbox or 85 as a beauty dish. With a beauty dish, you have four choice of different interiors, which is gold, silver, white, and half gold. So it depends uh, on the the environment, ambient. Uh, you're shooting at. If you're shooting at cloudy day, go for the white. If you're going for a fashion, high fashion look, go for, go for the silver. If you have afternoon, it the ambient line turns a bit yellowish. Um, or even a sunset, I will use gold. If you want to go somewhere crazy, I will use full gold. So that's about 80, 85W. Um, if you want to go for even pastel look, then go for the umbrella with a uh, diffuser and that's it and go and be crazy go go crazy with any anything you want to try just try them you have you yeah. already have the lights just try all the modifiers as i said yeah. it's not like i'm marrying a wife you stay with the same modifier for the rest of your life that's right that's right that's what i was gonna say like it's all just like 
trying and seeing what style you like. Do you like that high contrast look? Do you like that soft look? You know, there's just so many things you can do. Um, I have not used this light yet for weddings and I'm hoping to when I do get back to them. I've only had the light since April and I haven't shot a wedding since March. But I'm going to ask Gary something and this might help other people. I was using the Godox AD200 Pro. Now, I use flash in my work, but I use it like when I'm doing sort of indoor dark locations or if I'm doing a night photo. I love my signature thing is doing a backflash shot just before I leave the reception. Now, if I'm wanting to use my Godox 300 Pro, similar to me wanting to use my Godox 200 Pro, is there a little grid like you do get for the AD200 Pro? You know that the kit that we get, the AK, AK kit, is there like a little grid we can connect onto the AD300 Pro to avoid light spreading without having to put the umbrella on and the grid? Not for now. Not that um, yeah. I am aware of. Yeah, um, yeah. Whether they're going to develop something for Eddie 300 Pro in the future, I think yes. But yeah. uh, don't take my word for it. Yeah. Nothing official yeah, have told yeah. me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's... I think for waiting for backflash, you know, for that shot, because I yeah. know you for Love a while... That. Just stay with Eddie 200 Pro. It's probably yeah. easier to work with, yeah. unless you yeah. need a bit more power. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and not I guess, sure Eddie, th Eddie 200 Pro will be good. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess if I was going to take the Eddie 300 Pro, I'm going to give an example. Um, if I was shooting at, say, Mabasa, for instance, and I had the bride and groom on the staircase and I wanted to bring in some light, I could guess I could use the Godox AD300 with the softbox on a, st mm -hmm. on a stand and have my assistant hold it out there, get that shot, um, and then obviously go back in Photoshop later and mimic the other side and sort of thing. So I can use it heaps in my work, just depending on the situation. Like if I'm shooting really dark indoor photos, I would Vanity definitely Fair. use them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 my van or the Vanity Fair style shot. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But the, I guess the tip for this is just just keep trying, like just keep practicing, try different things, and um, don't yeah. limit yourself, and just make mistakes because you learn from them, and that's how you that's how you grow. Exactly. So for me, for wedding, it's like like when you use any three hundred pro. Hmm, I would say that. Um, do the Vanity Fair look mm. with the softbox. That mm -hmm. that will distinguish yourself from the other uh, wedding photographers. Use natural yeah. light or use small flash, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you have a bigger gun, use it. Yeah. Bigger gun, yeah. It makes me so, so hopefully that answers your question, Enrico. Yeah. Mm. When you are shooting alone, do you take a sandbag for the light stand or do you just stick your camera bag on it for stability? I use camera bag. That's <laughs> why. Like sandbag, like a proper sandbag. I, I have two sandbags in the back of my car all the time. They are 10 kilos each. It's so heavy. Uh, photo shoots you guys see over here, for example, it takes about, it's more than 600 meters of walking. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a 10 kilo sandbags with me to walk that far. I would just use my camera bag. And to be honest, um, 8300 Pro is small enough. Uh, you get away just with a camera bag as, um, for stabi uh, you know, stability rather than, um, rather than a sandbag. Sandbag, it's just extra weight. and um, But yeah, Russell, it's just my case because I carry most of my gears by myself. Mm. If you have an assistant, by all means. <laughs> by all means. And Aries too nice. He probably would not make his assistant carry the stuff anyway. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> He'll be like, no, yeah. it's okay, I'll carry it. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, sometimes the, the people you work with, they just give you the look, right? <laughs> Like you know, you 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 can you can see they are rolling the eyeballs on you, or you know in your I don't know if it's in, I'm a, you know have a hallucination or it's in my imagine in my imagination, 
So yeah. I I used to ask my um, makeup artist to hold the lights and stuff like those. I can't even carry a bag. They sometimes they go. <sighs> I was like, oh, <laughs> fine. I would just do that myself. Oh, I always get so. I always feel so bad asking the assistant to carry the bags. Like I feel like. I, I think I can manage it myself, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> if you could ask Godox to improve one thing with his current 8300 Pro, what would that be? I think 8300 Pro is fantastic. If there's only one thing I wanted to, to change, it's I want something very similar with my AKR1 kit. So yeah. you, can, you can easily adapt to the grade, like I actually mentioned in the, in the right? Mm, and, yeah. you know, a tiny dome and, yeah. you know, easily magnetic with color gels. Yeah. That's the only one thing I would um, I would want. That would become so handy. So um, you can sure. either, yeah. For now, if I'm in my wedding, I'll probably carry both 8200 Pro and 8300 Pro with me. I'll leave certain gear in my car. Mm -hmm. It's just because any 300 Pro with softbox, you can you can really have this nice close up. Everybody would purchase. It's almost like a portrait look, yeah. sort of you know, fashion. Or you can do some clamshell light with one light with a you know bounce lights like what what's coming, you know, like my lights now. Um, but you do need any 200 Pro with AKR one, you know, to do the run gun style, right? With quick location shots or full body shots, stuff like those. So if they have something similar to AKR1 for AD300 Pro, life's perfect. Oh, well, um, just to interrupt, Godox have said there will be more modifiers and umbrellas for the AD300 Pro coming out in the near future. Oh, which yeah. is awesome. Woo! <laughs> that makes me happy. Yeah. The more, the better. The more, the better. I know, but the modifiers yeah. are the funnest part, don't you think? Like yeah. it's just like exactly. You take, you take your photo without the modifiers, and then you're like, okay, that's okay. Then you add things, and then you're like, oh wow, I can do this. Yeah. And then you, you keep adding, and it's so exciting. That's why I love that little kit. Um, yes. What do we got next, Christian G? Do you direct the model a lot during shoots, or does your models know what to do most of the time? What kind of poses you want? To. Do you ever have the experience, like you know, because we we both learn things from Jerry Guiones, which yes. is the photographer we love. Um, the the trick I do still every day with my everyday shot is I ask people to mirror uh, what oh, I do. Yeah. What you do? Yeah, yeah, I still ask people, to, you know. And sometimes when you ask them to mirror, they just do something funny and you know, oh God, I'm going to have a very tough day. You know, in the first five minutes, you can tell. Does it make sense? I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Model, so, yeah. yeah, Christian, if that's the case, you probably have to give lots of directions because because people are even struggling. Your, 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 like, not so much with model because most professional models, they know what, you know, what, you know what to do but with your couple you you probably sometimes you have to give a lot of directions in a, in a sense uh with models uh it depends if the people i would say if the people if the model works really well with you like akira stick with her i stick with her all the time because she knows exactly what i want i know she i know her forte i know her person personality she's so basically um i will do the photo shoots actually suits her so i don't give a lot of directions in a sense because she's a professional model she knows what she does but in some models or less experienced models or in certain models um you probably have to give lots of uh, direction or poses you're looking for right yeah, yeah. and have you ever found like have you ever got like a model like bride and groom model that aren't together they're not boyfriend and girlfriend but they're models and you've hired them separately and then you get them together to do like a bride and groom shoot and they're just so awkward like they're just like you try and get them to hug and they hug and because you want to get like you're doing a bride and groom shoot but they yeah. i've had a couple recently like where i've been trying to like get a little bit closer with your faces and they're just like oh it's like, oh really yeah oh my god it's the worst like you know, but 
that model that Lee is it Lee that you've shot a few times. He yeah. so he literally will kiss the model if he has to. <laughs> he will kiss the model, but yeah, it's interesting. Some models work good. It depends on mod on the model, doesn't it? Yeah, it really depends on the model. And um, I think a good question you can ask is before you hire them is can you kiss? Yeah. If they say sure, we have no I have no problem with kissing, you know, oh okay. Mm. That's probably gonna be good for the wedding shoot. Yeah. If they cannot kiss, maybe can think again. Yeah. Think again. Even yeah. if you don't want them to kiss, you want them to be showing a little bit more engagement with each other. Soak in the moment, right? Exactly, exactly. Soak in the moment. All right, let's look at this. It says, how about leaving a Godox in one corner of the reception, pointing at the ceiling and walking around the room with a camera without the flash on camera flash? Would distant flash be sufficient? Never tried this, but... I, will, I would imagine no. Mm. How about, Rob, man, how, how about get a light and try it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, uh, Rob, I never tried that myself before, but what I do is I'll set up lights with a grid or double grids with a color gel. Um, 45 degree from camera, right? If it's a reception, think about this. It works well with um, decos, when you're shooting the decos or you shoot the speech, right? You set up lighting in another corner, 45 degrees. So whoever the guest is making the speech, they got a short light or split light that works quite well. Um, that's, I think point light source will work better with reception than soft light source. Like if it's dark reception, but it really depends, right? If it's lunch, then it's a different story. What do you think, Ash? Yeah, well, I've never done this, this method, but what I do love, and I've only ever done this once because I don't actually carry assistance or have assistance with me that much. But do you remember that time we did the Godox shoot together and um, you were yeah. following me around with the light and we are doing yeah. those? Off camera lighting, and you were like, doo, doo, yeah. doo. that was one of the best receptions I've ever photographed because the lighting was off camera, and so it had that beautiful shadow. It kind of reminded me of like sort of cinematic lighting. Um, but yeah, you have to have an assistant, and you have to have an assistant that knows where to be when you're at the certain point, don't you? Really, because if you just had like, you know, anyone do the assistant role they wouldn't know where you need to be to direct the light so that's my favorite that was the best lighting thing i've ever done for reception ever but i don't know about this one <laughs> it might work i don't know maybe i'll try it next so, time. Uh, rob uh, just a piece of advice um mm, so we all have to start somewhere i i shoot lots of my weddings uh, without assistant when i was started uh, even nowadays, with certain weddings, I shoot lots of them with no assistance. But think about this. Think about the wedding, not for the couple, not from the accounting perspective, but more from your personal portfolio. If this reception is somewhere you want to build your portfolio or the couple are the, are the nicest and most beautiful couple you have ever met, you, you, you know you're going to have a really good album out of it, Mm. It's worth a while. It's worth of it to get a professional lighting assistant. Assistant, you know, someone with um, with experience. That way, you can have lots of lots of you know better images in a sense. And yeah, that help a lot. Yeah, I think with reception too. In essence, right. in it. Can I answer something so, else about the question? To answer the question is that might work. Um, you just have to give it a try. You just but, have to give it a try. Can you hear me, Aries? Hello? Can you hear me? He can't hear me. Can you hear me? Any other questions? All right, Hello? Any questions? The four would be too great to work. Adding Tyro. Oh, okay, sorry, wrong. 
Hello, did you hear did me, you hear Eric? Not, Ashley? Can you hear me? Hello. Sorry, um well I He can't hear me. I know he put his AirPods just in, so I'm guessing he I'm can't sorry. hear me. Hello, hello. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, all of a sudden. Wait. Wait, just give me a sec. I think my... Um, can you hear me now? Um, I'm just going to change my audio really quick. Sorry, guys. Just give me a sec. So I think Aries can... Yeah, sorry. I'll just spend some time to... to um, um, to change my audio, sorry. Can you hear uh, so me now? The Mac mode system with 8300. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, a Mac mode actually works quite well with 8200. Um, it's kind of bulky comparing with my AKR1. That's why ever since AKR1, I stopped, I sort of sh migrating from uh, Mac mode to my AKR1. Uh, I'm not sure if it works with 8300. Give a try. If it works, let me know. I, I'm, I'm sure that I will be interested. <laughs> this one is a so funny one. <laughs> no kiss. <laughs> yes, that's definitely oh, right. Man. I, I sense there's some more jokes coming on the way. Uh, so I'll, I will just uh, hold my breath and I'll wait. Um, <laughs> Does the 8300 come in Bowen's Mount? That's the, let me just quickly show you, man. So Godox 8300 Pro is um, 8300 Pro uh, is a Godox mount, but you can adapt it to any um, Bowen mount. Let me just add this in. To any Bowen mount modifiers with H2 type bracket. All right. To answer that question. So just get a S2 type bracket. It will help your 8300 Pro to adapt to any Bowen mount. All right. Next. How long is a wedding day for you normally? And how do you stay, how do you both stay hydrated and well fed when trying to cover everything? Oh, you, you, you first, Ash. I sense there's something funny going to come out. So, <laughs> Honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I reckon I go, I go through the bride preps, groom preps, ceremony locations, and then I get to the reception when the couple are in the bridal table, uh, bridal room, and I'm like straight to the bar. <laughs> like, I need a wine. <laughs> Apart from that, I don't eat anything all day because I'm so busy. Um, but then, like, obviously, when you get to the reception stage, you're hanging around trying to wait for the food. Um, I think me and Aries did a wedding together in Sydney a few years ago. Yeah. We were waiting forever for food. And I think we got a pizza in the end, didn't we, or something? I don't know. Yeah. But we were so hungry. We were starving. But, yeah, um, I um, I have this hangriness um, going on. Yeah. So when I, <laughs> so whenever I'm shooting a wedding, I have this big one liter, uh, you know, water bottle with me all the time. I probably have several liter. Um, I'll make sure I'll you know I'll try to talk to the reception people to make sure we eat before everybody else. So when everybody's giving a speech, we can we can go there and photo shoot. And uh, that's pretty much it. But yeah. it never happens that way, does it? Yeah. You're always waiting for food. You're always hungry when you're shooting a wedding. Like, but yeah, it's good to if you're a hangry person like Aries, like make sure you carry like some lots of chocolate chips or chocolate or something because yeah. yeah. I think me and Aries that when we did that wedding, didn't we have like a big breakfast beforehand as well? And we we're still. Yeah. Serving yeah. I still remember it's a buffet. It's a buffet yeah. breakfast. Yeah, it's yeah, we, yeah. It perfect. Um, right, someone's AirPod battery went down. Yeah. I think another good thing is even you guys can't hear the music, I would, you know, but you guys get an idea. Um, oh, we can hear the music something. now. Sorry? 
I can hear the music now. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it's just from my Mac going all oh. the way to my to my okay microphone. This is beautiful. Yeah. So something different uh, make, made a difference for me with um, with the eighty three hundred Pro is that it comes with some with really nice modeling lamp. I think it's twelve volts. Mm -hmm. um, wait, sorry, oh, it's a wrong <laughs> video. Um, here's another short video. So basically before when you were doing that night shot, did you have the modeling lamp on, on a warm temperature, and then you had another um, flash on yeah. the side there? Yeah. Awesome. So basically this is a modeling lamp. That's, mm -hmm. um, I'm not, okay, it's not going to be bright enough to come back the midday sun, obviously, but it's really nice if you want to do some little videos. And mm. it also allows you to change the white balance between 3000K to 6000K. That's something new, which comes really handy when you do the night shot because you have a different sort of light, you know, going on everywhere or, you know, can be cold. It can be warm. It depends on the situation, right? So your, light, your modern lamp kind of works and help you to shoot lots of videos. Mm -hmm. So nowadays I shoot lots of B-rolls. It's just it's just me. But you know, ever since I think ever since 8300 Pro, I one light sort of does it does lots of flash and a little bit of video. So if you are a photographer looking into moving to the video kind of, or you know, you're doing a reception and you want to you know all of a sudden you want to do a short clip, 10 seconds or 30 seconds, give it to a couple as a gift. That's a great way of doing that. Yeah. So, so a modern lamp, if you are considering doing a tiny videos during the, um, during the reception or, you know, at the night shot, a modern lamp is something that you might want to consider. And you guys can see that with this um, left, right, left, right, left, Lightroom awning, right is Photoshop. You see, I barely, I don't do much Photoshop, to be honest. I just do some color correction in my Lightroom and that's it. So this, those ones on the left are all out of camera. Yeah. Wow. With, Lightroom, with my Lightroom preset, of course. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, so are you using the modeling lamp in these photos? Sorry? Using the yeah. modeling lamp in these photos? Yeah. It's about 4,000K. You can and see her face is properly lit, so yeah. 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 Wow. With night yeah. shot, you, you have to have a modeling lamp. Otherwise, it's very hard to, number one, it's very hard to focus. Number two, yeah. you know, uh, it's not, the street light is always far away. It's always harsh. Mm -hmm. It's not as soft as the softbox. Yeah. Beautiful. So hopefully that answered the questions. Do you ever... Do you have a count you in on the food at reception oh yeah we make them we make them count us in on that food <laughs> it's my contract yes because where are we going to go most of our wedding receptions are like well i mean maybe an hour like in the country or in the in the winery region or um you know there's no mcdonald's five minutes down the road so um like for me i always say that like when, when the client sits down to eat, we have to eat too because I mean we, we have to eat. Otherwise we don't we don't photograph good. <laughs> so what about you, Aries? Do you always make people count you in? Yeah, I um it's in my part of my contract says um are you going to provide um the meal the, the crew meal for everyone? It's usually me, the second photographer and as well as my assistant or videographer if we have a bigger bigger team um i was just i would usually just joking around with my clients i would say you know um you know 
I don't think any of my clients had a problem, but I would say, you know, it would look bad for everyone, like, right? You know, mm. if people have a 200 luxury, five meals waiting and your photographer doesn't get a feed and yeah. I can't go anywhere, should I call Uber Eats, I have a pizza, pizza delivery coming all the way from the dance floor to the end of the corner, dark corner with photographer? It doesn't look good, right? No. So yeah, I it's in my contract. We always get feed, and it's 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 the best. So we stay in the reception, stay hydrated, stay fed. We can stay yeah. focused and stay focused on shooting. Yeah, okay. that's right. And like you know, sometimes you may have to wait a while for food, or sometimes the food won't come out to you. But like in the in the very first sort of years of me being a photographer, I was so embarrassed to go and ask for food and like say to the people can I like am I gonna get fed like so I would just sit there and not eat but nowadays if my food is not out there I'm like storming up I'm like where is the photographer's food I need it now because <laughs> I'm so hungry by that stage like but um yeah food is important especially when you like I mean some weddings what time like if you're doing like a tea ceremony Aries, like you're up at like yeah. a.m. You know, oh, God, you, you, <laughs> don't, <laughs> you don't do that many of those weddings anymore, do you? I still do. If they ask for it, I still yeah. do. Um, but I will try to finish my shots by the afternoon. I will say, you know, second photographer, there's third or possibly third photographer come take over yeah. because my energy only lasts for about eight to ten hours. Uh, after that. You know, I'm yeah. useless. It's better to have someone from my company to take over, and and that's it. Yeah. All right, guys, be reminded this is a, a promo. Uh, it only works in Australia. So if you guys based in your US and and um, and uh, UK or you know Europe, this promo code wouldn't work. Please take a quick uh, picture because I'm going to show you something I never show anybody before. All right, are you guys ready? Oh, I'm excited. Here's yeah. a teaser. Hey guys, just remind Aries to always invite you to branding We all live busy lives and may not have the luxury of going to the gym multiple times a week. But with the right spirit, we can train anywhere at any time. A professional photography studio could be pretty expensive to rent. Lots of photographers may not afford the luxury to shoot in a big studio every week. However, with 81200 Pro, you can always create any light you want on any location. With 1200 watt output, any time is a good time to shoot. You can shoot in the morning, during the sunset, or even in the midday. Yeah. We arrived at Bandai Beach in pitch black to wait for the sunrise. A 40 watts modern lamp comes handy. We use it as a torch to help tie the rope, and more importantly, to help position the light before the golden hour. With it. You can use it anytime and anywhere you go. With the travel by air battery, you can fly the 8200 Pro anywhere you go. I like the fact the battery is separated so that the assistant can comfortably hold the light even at an awkward angle. Oh my goodness. 1200 watt superb output supports leading your subjects anywhere even from a distance away. Equipment needs to be user-friendly and versatile. The Bowen mount is compatible with a wide range of light modifiers. Interface on the battery is simple and intuitive to use. Wow. Carrying case helps the battery to be weatherproof. All right, I will leave the rest um, until the uh, official YouTube channel uh, release. It's going to, 
I think happening be happening within next week. So yeah, stay That's tuned, guys. That looks like a fun shoot. Yeah, that was um, that was uh, that was quite fun. That was quite fun. We um, we actually spent the whole day, and um, yeah, it was good. It was it was really good. All right, so maybe let's if there's let's answer one last question and let's call it for the day. <clears throat> not that Trevor, not that I am aware of, but stay tuned. If I have update on this one, I will um, I will I will mention about it in the future. In the future. In the future. Cool. Any other questions, guys? If you do not have any further question, we will call it for the end of the day. Thank you, okay, guys. guys. I'll see you guys until next week. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.